Welcome everybody. Today's video is going to be on how to successfully cope with an amputation. I hope you've watched the overview on the traumatic experience of an amputation. If you haven't, go back and watch that after this one. This video is going to talk about, again, some specific coping skills on how to deal with this. Now this will be a general sense that I think will be beneficial to all people. Each of you also will need some of your own individualized specific coping skills. And it might be helpful to see a healthcare professional, a therapist, and counselor to help you individually through this process. But I at least hope this will be a good beginning and a good start to help you know what you can do and expect through this process. Now, as stated in the video on trauma, is that how one copes and deals with an amputation is as varied as there are people out there that go through this experience. And also timing. There's a timing issue in this experience. As I've worked with people that have gone through amputations and, and gone through the healing process, some people can do really well in the beginning and they can be positive and optimistic and they can really want to tackle this in a, in a healthy way. And they do for a period of time. And then months, even a year later, it can really hit them and they can start to struggle and, and go through a, a different stage of the healing process. Or you can be devastated right off the beginning and having difficulty coping with this. So wherever you're at, whether this just happened and you're learning these skills and tools and watching this, or whether this has happened months or even over a year ago when you're watching this. So regardless of the two, I think this will be helpful and it'll give you some skills and some tools and some principles to understand through the healing process. So in the beginning, I want to be really clear that you're going to probably go through a roller coaster of emotions. And if you haven't already, please watch the video on the stages of grief because I'm really going into detail about all the different emotions that you can expect to experience in the healing process. But a huge coping skill is giving yourself permission to experience all these wide range of emotions and not feeling guilty or bad or weak or less than if you have a down day or you're angry or depressed. Again, these are all stages of grief that I go into detail in that video. But for purposes of this video, the coping skill given is give yourself permission to feel. Your feelings are valid. And I think that is an important aspect of successful coping in any traumatic event and especially experiencing an amputation. There's going to be coping with those around you too. And they need some coping skills as well. So family members of amputees should also be watching this as well because how do they respond? They don't know. It's like interacting with somebody who's gone through a death. We don't know what to do. We don't know what to say. Uh, oh, I'm so sorry. You've experienced this. People say the darndest things, right? And as an amputee, I know you've heard them all. From the awkward comments to the downright stupid comments that you hear from other people. So learning how to cope with other people <laughs> is a really big aspect to this and not taking personally or getting overly frustrated with the non-amputees in your life and what they may say or how they may approach you in this process. Those skills will are, are a specific set of skills too and I may encourage you to watch again the videos, the general videos that I've created to help one regulate their emotions and distorted thinking patterns because you're going to have some emotions and feelings towards others when they make certain comments to you or don't know how to react. 
because we're just not taught as a society to deal with people that are different from us in an effective way. And so, again, as an amputee, I know you can feel very different from the rest of the world. In one way, you are, and that's okay. You're now your unique self and experiencing that from a healthy state, first looking in the mirror and being healthy with it will be really important. So let's talk about this coping skill of self-esteem. Chances are your self-esteem is gonna take a hit. So you're going to want to really work on those things that build your self-esteem and your self-worth. So how do we do all this? I have the three S's to coping with a traumatic event uh, of any sorts in life. And experiencing an amputation is no different. So let's look at each of these three S's. The first one is support. I talk about support in the one, the video on trauma as a protective factor. And it really is an essential coping skill. You can't do this alone. This is something that really is important to have a good support team to talk to or to be around when you're feeling down and when you're feeling defeated and discouraged. And so you need and want positive, healthy, supportive people around you. That could be family, friends, professional therapist, your prosthesis, doctor. There's a lot of people that are going to be in your circle of influence that can be a really supportive factor for you. And so you want to develop a healthy, supportive support team. That's coping skill number one. Without that, this is going to be really difficult. The next S is self-care. Self-care is huge. Doing those things for you that help you cope with this. And there's a wide variety of self-care skills and tools that are really important. I'm just gonna go over a few that I think are really big, uh, but you'll find more and, and experience more that fit your personality as well. And you wanna do your homework and your research on this on your own. But let's talk about some basics. One important self-care tool will be finding a hobby and interest. And this is a big one because this may have changed drastically depending upon your amputation. If your amputation has affected your main hobby and interest, that's going to be very discouraging and depressing for a while, if not for a long while. And again, that's okay. But that doesn't mean you can't find new hobbies and interests. That may sound really easy coming from someone who's not an amputee, but the principle is important and essential. And I've seen it and I've heard about that from amputees to confirm this. There's a lot of activities out there. And yes, it may not be your given one, but there is something. There's a lot of inspiring stories about amputees that have overcome and triumphed from this traumatic experience in their life. And if they've done it, you can do it. So the world's your playground. Take the time to really go out and explore. What can you do now? What can you find an interest in and a passion in, in spite of your amputation? I know it's possible. I know you can do it. And so I strongly encourage you to go out and find that interest and that hobby. That's going to be huge in this recovery process. Another one is exercise. Now again, this may have been drastically changed on how you exercise depending on your amputation. But exercise is a known antidote to anxiety and depression. And again, you're going to experience some depression and perhaps even anxiety going through an amputation. And so getting out and getting the body moving in whatever way you can is going to be really important. Now, of course, you may have to adapt 
to your specific needs and abilities. But there is a way for all of you, anybody watching this, there's a way to get out and get moving. Somebody once has said that motion is part of emotion. And if we want to feel good, then we need to get up and be moving. We can't get sedentary. We can't just curl up and hibernate. If we do, that's really gonna affect our emotions. That's gonna affect how we get through this grieving process. So get out, find a hobby and interest, and get out and get moving and exercise. Now again, those are just some key points, but the main principle is do self-care. Take care of you in a healthy way. Now we have to talk a little bit about unhealthy self-care. And those who experience an amputation are at a greater risk of experiencing addiction or coping through the means of things like drugs and alcohol or other addictive behaviors that seem to make the pain go away right away in the instant. And they do, but they're not healthy. So stay away from those things. If those are part of your life, then again, seek professional help. You wanna make sure you're coping and dealing with this life experience in the most healthy ways possible. So do some research, find some self-care activities and ideas. There's numerous ones. This video, I can explain and teach you all the self-care techniques, but I think the things that we've talked about are one of the top on the list, at least in my experience and my opinion. All right, let's go to the third S. The third S is spiritual or spirituality or spiritual growth. Research has shown that those who have a spiritual foundation or spiritual faith cope with and heal through the amputation process more effectively than those who do not. And this is true in a lot of areas of life, but specifically to amputations, we find this to be true. Now, I'm not going to define what spirituality is to you. And there's a difference between spirituality and religiosity. I'm not saying you have to go to church and become a Bible thumper. What I'm saying is you, to cope with this experience, it's going to be really important for you to have a sense of a spiritual belief. Why? I think a large part, those who have a spiritual belief system have a belief and a philosophy in life that allows them to cope with tragedy and trauma much differently than those who don't. It answers the question of why for a lot of people or how to cope. And so if you are a spiritual person, then continue that path. If you're not, I encourage you to explore that, research it. What does it mean to be spiritual to you and how can you develop that in your life? Let's talk about some areas of spirituality that are kind of general to most people. A big spiritual practice is prayer and meditation. Now again, you don't have to be religious to believe in prayer and meditation, but those who practice it find great benefits from it. And so if that's not something that you've learned about or tried, I highly encourage you. Now that can also tie into self-care. When we do these practices, we're taking care of ourselves, but we're also connecting spiritually. Another common way to grow or experience spirituality is through giving service. Service to others is predominantly a spiritual practice. It's helping another human being. And when we provide service to someone else in need, we can't help but feel good about ourselves. And so if going through this amputation, again, has gotten you down on yourself in your life, a great antidote to that is to serve others and help others who are in need. It's a time proven skill and tool to feel good about ourselves and to lift our spirits and to feel spiritual.
So again, I'm not here to define what spiritual means to you, but I'm here to tell you that it's proven that again, those that are spiritually minded can cope and get through this experience more effectively than those who are not. So these are some basic coping skills and tools to deal with an amputation. Again, you need to have support. You need to have a healthy team around you to build you up when you're struggling. You need to have self-care. You need to take care of yourself and do those things that make you happy in a healthy way. And you need to have a spiritual foundation and to grow spiritually, whatever that means to you. Again, I hope this was helpful. Please provide feedback. Please let me know other areas and other things that have helped you cope successfully with an amputation. Because if it's helped you, it may help someone else. And I know the amputation community is small and it's a tight-knit community. And so help each other by responding and telling each other what's working for you. Until next time, make it a great day and make it a great week.